you have complex problems today. And one of those is designing materials, for example. And I think that's one of the most exciting applications that will come about is being able to predict how a material will behave uh, before it's made. So uh, unlocking this potential to solve new problems like that, I think is going to fundamentally change, you know, not just materials, but, but perhaps every piece of technology that we're familiar with today, from computing to communications to sensing. And I, that's where I think it's going to touch every person on the planet, whether they realize it or not. We manufacture high precision electrical, optical, and cryogenic systems for quantum materials research and also for quantum applications. Um, since day one, the cryogenic solutions, uh, our cryogenic solutions have fo focused on taking the hassle out of cryogenics so that our customers can spend time focusing on results and really accelerating discoveries in quantum information science. So we provide to it intuitive, accessible, easy to use platforms that accelerate the pace of research by really increasing the end user productivity. At some point we realized like 90% of our customer base is developing and um, exploring quantum materials. And, and then what happened next was really exciting where we, we realized that many, many, much of our customer base who were developing the quantum materials then began to move into a space where they were um, uh, employ using these materials and harnessing their capabilities to do something useful. And so it moved from research into an engineering and production and eventually a production phase Most of the cryogenic systems today were designed for research applications. So they're really not appropriate for commercial applications. We need to rethink the approach to cryogenics entirely. We can't just keep putting band-aids on an old technology, an old system, right? It cannot be an incremental approach. Um, you know, today, most of the quantum systems are built around the cryogenic system because and so it's like the cryogenic is, is king and everything else has to kind of fit into that form but this is really backwards what really needs to happen is the the approach to cryogenics should really start with the cry with the uh the quantum device and its operation and then the architecture the reliability the serviceability scalability all these things should be considered from the initial design and not as an afterthought What our tools are doing is allowing the, the qubits to actually exist on our platform and be accessed by uh, both electrically as well as optically. And, uh, and so that the, the computing operation can happen. And it's almost like you can, you can imagine an optical table that's all at cryogenic temperatures, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got this platform that you know, you, you built something at, at room temperature, it worked, but then you want to put all that into a cryogenic space. And so we've allowed customers to actually build out their, their optical setup and a, a large portion of it really at like on a four Kelvin breadboard. And so it's just like a, it's like a playground that the physicist gets to use to explore these quantum, uh, quantum properties what first attracted us to QEDC was that it brings together the thought leaders and the industry suppliers. So the thought leaders are you know, those with the firsthand knowledge of the barriers that exist today for advancing quantum applications, while the suppliers like us, uh, we're, we're designing the equipment. And because we're designing the equipment, we're oftentimes in a position to remove many of those barriers once we understand clearly what it is that needs to be solved. And so this, this connection has happened and it is happening constantly. And, and that, that's going to make a, a really big difference. Um, one, of our, one of our roles in QEDC thus far 
was to lead the development of a roadmap for cryogenics for the quantum industry. Collaboratively with other cryogenics companies, um, we brought together academia, government, industry, and uh, the, what we did there is to identify and prioritize the, the cryogenic rela related needs of QIST system development, which when solved, will accelerate the pace of innovation and the adoption of these QIST applications. So this has really been a, a fascinating and rewarding process that's brought really some of the best people in the world together to clarify for everyone what the, the important barriers are to remove so that we can begin to solve you know, the most impactful problems for the QIST community.